do something that may seem a little strange to some of you. I want you all to close your eyes. Seriously, all of you, no peeking. Close your eyes. All right, I want you to take a minute and think about what you're wearing. Why did you choose it today? Maybe it's your grandma's favorite color, so you decide to honor her. Maybe it's because you look fierce. No, no problem with that. Maybe it's because a dating coach told you that if you wore some big blingy accessory, it's a good conversation starter. Or maybe you were running late today, or maybe that's just what you had in your suitcase. Whatever the reason is, now that you're relaxed, I want you to think about why you wore what you wore today. All right, no one's snoring. Everyone open your eyes. I don't want you falling asleep yet. <laughs> All right, now look around. It's a little dark, but look around. Everyone in this room wore what they wore for a reason. They wore what they wore. We're all individuals here, and we chose what to wear. Me, for example, I wore this necklace. It's from Apricot Lane, Boutique in Provo. They are a huge supporter of fashion in Utah, so I wanted to honor them tonight, so I wore it. Now, if you look around, we are all a community, especially the past few days. You know, a lot of us from out of town, I really connected with some of you. And we've created a community that works together, but our community also inspires fashion. Now, I started a website called FashionUtah.com, and what we do is cover basically fashion, local designers, local boutiques in my home state of Utah. But before I moved there, you know, I moved from Los Angeles. I wasn't quite sure what was going on in the fashion scene. And as we built this site, we started to discover there were a few trends in building a community. And these come in the form of stitches. Now, I'm no designer, so bear with me. But <laughs> these stitches are, first off, the chain stitch, secondly, the hand stitch, third, mechanical stitches, which we'll get into a little bit, and then fourth is um, the cross stitch. Now, before I begin, I want to tell you a little bit of a story that talks about how, yeah, we have communities, and they come in a lot of different forms. They may be a geographic area, they may be a style segment, they could even be a financial class. But the one thing that is common is that they unite people. But in order for these communities to really start, they need a leader. They need someone to kind of get them going. So I'm going to um, tell you a little story. I'm sorry, I'm a little behind on my clicker because you guys are all so attractive. Um, I'm going to tell you a story about some of these influential people. It's the mid-1990s, right? We have hush puppies. Hush Puppies at this time was selling 30,000 units. They were about to go out of business. Executives were phasing them out. It was time for them to go. But something strange happened. In Manhattan, all of a sudden, all the Hush Puppies sold out. So they're trying to figure out, okay, what's going on? They started going to clubs. They see Hush Puppies on clubbers and on bar goers. And all of a sudden, Hush Puppies two years later were sold out across the nation. They were selling 430,000 units. They were on the runway. They were on Hollywood's It People. And they even won an accessory from the Fashion Council. It's called Best Accessory Award. So here we have this whole transformation of a brand. And it all started with a few people in the clubs in Manhattan. Now, if you're like me, I am dying to know who are these kids, right? I can imagine their parents saying, come on, guys, get a job. Stop clubbing every night. You know, like, let's get with the program. But they had influence in their community, and because of that, it grew and it actually started to affect the Hush Puppies brand. So this is a perfect example of the chain stitch. So if you know sewing, you know if you per se crochet, you start with the chain stitch, and this is the foundation. And this is true within communities as well. This is the person who is going to be giving. That's what they want to do. Um, Burberry CEO at a recent TED Talk said, the best way to combat negative forces and achieve a success is by harnessing human energy. She says, people may forget what you did or said, but not how you made them feel. Do you know someone like that? Do you know someone who when you, you know, finished lunch with them, they've asked you about your project, and you're like, oh, I forgot to even ask them how their day went? Do you know someone who, whenever you meet with them, makes you feel better, you feel uplifted when you leave? That's the chain stitch. They are worried about everyone else. 
Now in Utah, we have a chain stitch. Her name is Sophie St. Clair. She is a local designer. That's her line. And she's very creative, but she has amazing technical skills. I am amazed by her all the time. Now the thing about Sophie is, you know, you call her up, hey Sophie, want to go to lunch? Oh, you know what? Don't have time for that. Let's grab a coffee. Well, you don't just go to coffee with Sophie. You go to coffee with Sophie and three of her best friends who are all working on projects that are going to help you with your project and then all of a sudden you go to lunch and you have like five new companies and you have, you know, all new designs and a fashion show in the works. Literally, I'm not kidding. I have seen this happen. Sophie is a connector. She is the chain. She is the chain that starts and then from there, other chains can grow off. She is the chain stitch. But in order for us to have these chain stitches and be able to find them, we need some tools. And the first tool is the hand stitch. Now the hand stitch is probably the most personal of all stitches. Many of you are designers. I'm sure you've spent a lot of time doing them. You plan it out, you put it on the garment, and then you thread your needle and, and you go stitch by <coughs> stitch. It's so personal. I once met a woman, she was 100 years old, and in her words she said, with the last few years of my life, I want to make a difference. And so she decided that she was going to make quilts and she was going to send them to orphanages around the world. Now, if it were me, I'd be like, okay, I'll buy some blankets from you know, the store, maybe make the easiest quilt, but not her. She made specific designs for each quilt. She embroidered them, she did hand stitching. She customized these things. So I asked her, I was like, okay, you know, you maybe don't have a lot of time left. We don't really know. It was insensitive of me. So, you know, why are you doing this? You know, why are you taking all this time? She looks at me and she says, you know, Jet, there's a kid over, you know, around the world, and if they get a quilt that looks like all their friends, it's like, eh, I got a blanket, great. But if they get a blanket of mine that is specialized and they can see the stitching on it, they know that someone in this world loved them enough to take the time and hand stitch it for them. Hand stitching is personal. And when it comes to community, that's face-to-face -face time. That's walking down the street saying hi to your neighbors, but that's also going to events. It's buying local fashion, buying from local designers and boutiques. It's really putting yourself out there. It's not always easy. It's oftentimes time-consuming, but it's personal and it's worth it. But, you know, before you can start with your hand stitch, you gotta have a plan, and you gotta find out where your community is. And that is where we get into our mechanical stitching. Now that's not really an official term, but bear with me, I'm not a designer, right? So mechanical stitching is the sewing machine in our community. You know, when the sewing machine came on, it revolutionized fashion, it changed it. For communities, internet. Now, let's think about this. You're going to Seattle, you want to meet with some fashion designers, you want to go to some boutiques, where do you go? Okay, maybe a few of you have an idea. Okay, what if you want to go to Kansas City? Missouri, Alaska? If you don't know, you just got on your phone or your computer and Googled it. Right? We have online communities, and it is the way to facilitate faster connections. Again, you still need hand stitching and you still need to build those personal relationships because, let's be honest, if you think of community, you don't really think of someone on their iPhone in a restaurant, oh, I'm not talking to, you know, my guy. No, that's not community. But you do need some of these tools so that you can connect and find the people who are influential. And that brings up the perfect reason for why we need the cross stitch. The cross stitch is one side design and creative mind, one side business. It is the perfect marriage. Now, a lot of times I get feedback from my Utah designer saying, business, ha, huh, we don't need that. But without it, you know, designer, you guys need food to eat. You need some shelter overhead, <laughs> you know? And without the business side, you're just not gonna get that. Um, a perfect example is Nasty Gal. Since its inception, it's had a 500% profit growth, growth rate. rate. Um, and they estimate, I mean, they're not public numbers, but they estimate it's $100 million they broke in sales in 2012. So pretty successful companies getting started. Well, clothing aside, because we know that they have their own designers and their own looks, I want to talk to you about Terry Richardson, who was 
a pretty well-known photographer in the fashion industry. He takes all their photos, so he pairs the creativity of the clothing, of the styling, into his photos. And he pairs that with the business sense of the CEO, and together they've been able to create this profit margin. Now, a lot of successful businesses, that's what they've got to do. We don't need to be afraid of each other. We work in different ways. Our minds work in different ways. But that's the beauty in it. We work together. And this happens, again, I need a business person to keep my clicker going, right? But this happens because we come together and we put our community first. It's all about our community. We all have our own specific niche to stitch. We create a tapestry together by using our skills, by using the chain stitches, by using hand stitches and mechanical <coughs> stitches. Every one of you in this room is a single thread or yarn. And when we weave them together, we not only become useful, but we also produce a beautiful tapestry. So when you think about what you're wearing today, what you chose to wear, start to think about your community. You know, thankfully to like the Stitch Factory and the Downtown Alliance, we're all here together forming these creative, uh, community bonds via hand stitching, right? And we're starting to, to get this together. So remember your chain stitches. Remember that group who motivated you, who inspired you, who connected you to maybe that first investor. Think of the time and the effort of all the people who have organized events like these and events in your community. And remember the tools that you use to find them, whether it's the internet or Facebook or any of those online tools that got you to your first event and let you find out where that is. And remember the beauty in cross stitches. Again, the perfect marriage. So our communities, whether they're big or small, rich or poor, or under what some may consider dire circumstances, can come to the most beautiful tapestry and most beautiful picture and art of all. It's not just the design we see, but it's the fabric that weaves us together as humans. And we do this by building our communities one stitch at a time. Thank you.